ready to, to start applying all of my textures to the assets and objects inside of my scene. And I've run into a little bit of a nightmare situation. And that situation is, I just have a lot of textures to incorporate into my shader graph here. Each, I have what, five different textures? Yeah, I got five different textures that I now need to work with inside of Blender. And the idea of importing and dragging each one of these down into my shader graph and then wiring them all together, it's just gonna take forever. Let me introduce you to a wonderful extension to Blender called Node Wrangler. This is a free addition to Blender that's already installed inside of your machine. You just need to activate it. Adding uh, or activating add-ons into Blender is really easy. And the first thing that we're going to do is go into our global preferences, our global Blender, Blender preferences. And we start this process by going into the add-on sections. Often we're in the interface when it first pops up, but we're going to go into add-ons. Like I mentioned, Node Wrangler is a free addition to Blender that's already part of the bundle that comes with each one of the installers. We just need to turn it on. So we're going to do a search for Node Wrangler, and this is going to help us. There it is, Node Wrangler. Just all you need to do is simply activate it by clicking the little checkbox here and the plugin will be immediately installed. You don't even have to restart Blender, which is pretty great. Node Wrangler is going to do a lot of the heavy lifting of wiring in all of these textures for us automatically in the background, which is very, very appreciative, uh, appreciated in this specific moment. Let me go to the branch material and let's start this process. Working with Node Wrangler is super easy. The only thing that you need to make sure you do before you start the process is to select the shader that you want all of these uh, all these images to be wired into. So I want this shader to accept all the images and then the magical keyboard shortcut is Control Shift T, T is in Tango. Now the moment you hit the T key, it's going to bring open your bring open your finder, so you, and you're going to need to navigate to where you've saved all the textures for your for the object that you're trying to work with. So here's all the textures for my scene, and there are a bunch of them in there. And I'm going to I'm going to drag or I'm going to click uh, select all the textures from my branch. Now I cl clicked on the first one held down the shift key and I clicked on the last one and it selected all of them in between. And then watch what happens when I hit principled texture set down here. This is the magic. Voila, it automatically imported all the images into my graph and wired them to their appropriate and correct channel inside the shader itself. Magic. Thank you, Node Wrangler. Upon inspection, you can see exactly what's going on. It's not too different than what we've uh, what we've talked about before. The base color image is going into the base color channel. Metallic is going to its right spot. Check it out. This is how cool Node Wrangler is. It also changes the color space. Thank you, Node Wrangler. It is awesome. The roughness is going to its appropriate channel. Hey, look, it even added the normal map converter in there for us automatically and changed the color space to normal or to non-color. Thank you. Now, there's also a couple other things that Node Wrangler does for us, which is kind of a nice little benefit. If you look down here, this is the height map that was exported from Substance Painter, and it automatically created a displacement mode node and is sending all of that displacement information over into the material itself. So thank you, Node Wrangler. It's, it's doing a, the heavy lifting for us. In addition, it also creates some references to the UV maps and the texture coordinate system. This isn't ne not really necessary, but it's just kind of good structure, if you will. It's just a great way of, of defining the coordinate system and ensuring that all the textures are using the same coordinate system to define where the images are going to be placed on the models itself. So not necessary, but a, a, but a welcome addition inside of our inside of our graph itself. I'm going to do the exact same thing real fast to the other objects inside of my scene, and you'll be able to see pretty quickly how fast this goes. Here's the flower. Got the shader selected. Control Shift T. Let's find all the flower images, which are these these fellers right in here. Voila. Now, don't worry about this. This is going to get resolved here in a minute once I get everything kind of uh, situated. Let's get the lily pad in here. See how the moment I clicked into another shader, it went away. Yeah. It's, uh, don't freak out if that happens to you. Just keep going. Trust your material assignments. They are working. Sometimes when you're loaded in images, things get confused just for a moment. Control Shift T once again. Oops. Let me put my mouse cursor down on the graph. Control Shift T. This is for the lily pad. 
get that in there. And what would have taken me a long, long time to get situated is going very quickly. I am so thankful for Node Wrangler. It really does make my life a whole lot easier. And voila, there it is. I like it. Let's go back to the branch. And there it is. There's my scene, all textured, ready to rock and roll, ready to be sent over into Sketchfab. And we're going to be talking about that process uh, next week. But all the textures are in. I can now uh, change my focus to the, to the composition of my render, the lighting of my scene, and creating a wonderful series of, uh, of, of renders that really does a great job describing what I want my audience to see.